What? Good to YouTube, and welcome to the house. My allergies are insane today, so forgive me if I stop to take a sip of a drink and recenter myself. My unprofessionalism is very becoming, though, isn't it? That being said, should you be buying first of Destiny Sealed? So many people in my DMs, instead of asking me if they should be buying it, have been asking me where they can buy it already because these reveals have been pretty hype. Flun 3s seems like it could be the next meta deck. You have this new stun card and it's crazy. Before these points come forward, Market Man's job is to tell you the good and the bad and there's some things I think a lot of people haven't considered after some early conversations but if you are going in on this set first let's talk price point code what's good five for five percent off and to support the channel directly right now the cheapest deal I've seen is big three deals with that five percent off you get it down to per box just at fifty three dollars and four cents each about that's a crazy good deal then if they run out you also have gamers choice just a little more expensive barely not even a dollar per box more so early bird specials when you know less about a set make them very appealing and since we know quite a bit more about the set many people want in because they see this as the next rise of the duelist the next eternity code this set's crazy i do not think this is rise of the duelist good i think it's probably about eternity C code good but let's talk about all those sets and also what you may not have considered so starting with have you thought about the megatons of course i've thought of rise of the duelist attorney code you just said those sets these tens are gonna be crazy uh, uh, uh. not the 2021 tens but if we are looking at the 2022 tens let's do a little math of sets after phantom rage comes blazing dumpster fire then lightning underdrive which i actually think is okay but reprints those values aren't so great for a 2022 10 then we get to donna majesty which people are more excited for there's some things in there that are like pretty nice a good synchro i hear a new instant fusion then you get to burst i think this set is so cracked because it's the final set of those megatons only one year ever have we had you know savage strike plucked out of the tens i don't think they'll pull a savage strike with it but it's not guaranteed to be in the tens just highly extremely almost indefinitely probably likely that it's in the 2022 tens to help secure that value i do think that's a huge reason why this set is so good so if they do not delay next year's mega tens we should see those drop in august only giving you 10 months to play with the set also unlike eternity code and rise of the duels this production shouldn't be shorted hopefully so you will see as many people order as much of this as they possibly can meaning there should be a lot more out of it out there than in those two sets so people planning to sit on this like oh if i had it to do over again i would keep rise of the dual sealed eternity code sealed keep in mind you have a 10 month window before we head towards megatons and then probably a six month window after the march reprint set that kind of stuff where people start talking about megatons and the cards inside here so you're relying more so even longer term than that on stuff like starlight rares how memorable the set is and i do think it has a lot of charm and potential even past that but if you're playing that more immediate game keep that timeline in mind now also newer ratios people hoping to buy a case and just get everything that is not possible any longer mathematically even without short prints let's break that down real quick so per box you're pulling two different secret rares and then you have 12 boxes in a case which is the price point we showed in there that's 24 total secrets but now you have 10 different secrets so if you're looking for a play set of everything you would have to pull three of each you mathematically cannot do that in a single case also clumping is a thing a lot of the time with core sets where you see a lot more of one or two ultras one or two secrets so people are getting either luckier or unluckier with what they are seeing but you're less likely to get a playset of a secret rare than you are likely to at 2.4. So keep that in mind if you're hoping to split open a case. Your entire team is going to have all of the decks from it. That's why we want to... No, that's not going to happen that way most likely unless you get extremely lucky on what you are after. So if you're after a specific deck, even the Flundries, it may benefit you to go for the singles, but they could be extremely hyped and high up there in rarity, especially with them being 
being focused early in the set description if you're after multiple decks though maybe two cases is the way to go depending on your team and that sort of thing depending on the bankroll and chasing after starlights because on average it's two cases you end up pulling a starlight but you are still rolling the dice so keep that on mind if you're trying to pull the singles but burst of destiny is one of the first sets where it's actually worth talking about pulling the singles in a long time just like rise actually aged extremely well i think there's a ton of things going on here so you do have the flundries as the main conversation piece point if you haven't got that a lot of people are really wanting to try this deck out and whenever you have that many people looking after something even if it relies on its normal summoning oh a hand trap can end up stopping it in its track yes the meta can go heavily towards it but then when metas go heavily towards something like that other things start to succeed and that's how meta games develop i think there's a lot of potential here i do think it's pretty much eight out of ten most likely to be topping regionals even ycs levels i do think this is a really good deck and deserves some of the hype it's getting you do also have this new stun card initially people were confused on the text so let me read through this real quick you can only use one of this card's names first and second effects per turn and only once that turn so you cannot use both in the same turn during your main phase you can reel this card in your hand until the end of your opponent's turn and if you do all this card is revealed by this card effect set cards on the field cannot be destroyed by card effects so you're able to protect back row as long as it's a reveal stopping you from getting harpy's feather duster lightning storm the champion of stun and back row decks then if a set spell or trap card is activated you can special summon this card from your hand then if this effect was activated while it was revealed you can set one spell or trap directly from your deck to the field but banish it during the end phase it's also got huge stats giving you know kind of a oomph to decks like trap tricks that need a big monster to hit the board and help them out and searches you any spell or trap it's a pretty darn good card overall but you can't reveal it and then summon it in the same turn you have to do those separately but it is a really good card and i think you will see it topping at least at the regional level and probably some ycs's too then you have the zhang zhan coming in late into the reveals and really good worm synchro archetype that i'm a fan of i could be thinking way too much with player brain but the advantage that it offers and the ability to go synchro climbing has already caused buyouts on the secondary market so we can feel an impact you also have a really good generic synchro 10 here that ends up getting powered up by banished cards and then you do get a negation working with any worm monster and a tuner going for other decks that may not play this or may play this still as an engine with it but man are these cards Cards really really fun to read and cool you also got Veral code dragon giving people some hype here with Veral Code, it does have an interesting effect to banish a dark monster on the field with 3,000 or more attack. That doesn't have to be you control, so you could end up non-targetingly take out a Dragoon or a Savage Dragon that's already used their effect. That is a funny effect on its third effect, but all of them are pretty good effects on Veral Code. And, you know, that's kind of the theme of the entire set is going to be the Veral stuff on the cover. You also do have memorable stuff that I don't know will turn out all that great. Penguin decks have top in the memes before but penguins are memorable so are sioux ships and with both of those archetypes i think it's still noteworthy that being memorable is a good thing whenever people start out or they want memes they want kind of collections these are things people will genuinely still be after to an extent but not maybe majorly don't you talk about my penguin collection like that john i don't want to go too far into the despia because i really do like the archetypes mechanics but i don't want to be overly biased with player brain towards a set i do think despia are really really cool though but i don't know that they'll live up to the hype that some people are getting giving like oh they're gonna get wind to ban no when the or schism would get when the ban and then you also have the magic key becoming maybe more of a stable engine but i think that is still rogue and while i find it cool i don't want to mix player brain with market brain it's cool but i don't think that it'll necessarily be all that much on the market finally the piece de resistance we still do not know anything about the tcg premiere theme that will be in donna majesty getting continued into here usually though 
it's a, either make or break it on the first reveals of a TCG archetype where we see these cards. Is it already good? Is it not good? Did it actually get better? Very few times you have dangerous support where it just continues to get better. So I'm not holding my breath for that to make or break this. On its own, it already seems pretty hype. If you have multiple people in a team going after singles, cases might be for you. If you, But that's if you're after different decks and not the same deck necessarily within that team. If you're sitting on it sealed, I do think it can go up to where it's worth selling in those 10 months. Realize though, there's probably not going to be a shortage or hopefully not a shortage on this product. Konami has been doing pretty good on fulfilling orders with delays they have been doing. So I would hope that everybody who orders this does end up getting it instead of allocation. And you're not going to have that shortage that Rise or Eternity Code added hype to those prices and helping them spike in that linear path like, yeah, two sets in a row. That's not necessarily going to follow just like that. But I do think this will be ripped open heavily and definitely eyed in 10 months is a long time for people to be without certain cards, start to get that itch, got to play my deck, that kind of stuff. So I do think that this is pretty good to buy, but consider everything in terms of timelines when approaching it. It's definitely a thumbs up for me overall, but if you're after just a couple of things, obviously go with those singles. That being said, thanks for watching today's video. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoy these conversations. Burst, it, it's crazy how good it feels after a dry spell of product. And I also do want you to consider, if you're going super long term, where else you could be putting money, such as, you know, Brothers of Legend. Every single Battles of Legend box has done extremely well over time. Even the biggest flops were likely to still get some kind of chase card like the Leviathan in here and maybe something else and then you still have pretty good support and updates to certain cards in here but Brothers of Legend can be one of those decks that ends up having short prints as you know Battles did last year kind of like the March reprint set so keep that in mind there's also Gold Series every single Gold Series has done good you could have got these displays for around 90 last year you can see they've aged well up towards MSRP and that is pretty good for a side set but every Gold has aged over time to despite whatever singles are inside very well. And the singles in here have done super well for themselves so far. So do consider if you're sitting on that long-term, where else you could be putting your money for it. But if you're planning to hope for it to spike, go up, and then flip it, be aware it's the last set that's probably in the 2022 Megathons. Thanks for watching, everybody.